Good evening, RoboCraftians! Welcome today to another episode. Here we're going to go ahead and do a teardown of my Hover Medic build, my battleship design. Uh, I had a couple of requests for this to do a teardown and show, you know, what goes into it, where's the, the triforcing. I mean, it is a little bit of triforcing, not very much. Um, I, I tried to take advantage of the principles of triforcing because I see triforcing as being more of a theory. Uh, triforcing is more about the concept of the way that damage transfers from one block to the next and utilizing this to try to increase the uh, the amount of damage something can take. So you can compact your triforcing and, you know, guide the damage along longer routes. Um, and that's one way to handle triforcing, but I don't think that that's the only type of triforcing. And I'll, I'll show you here in a minute what I'm doing uh, to take advantage of these triforcing principles while also doing a teardown. Um, so let's see, uh, a couple things about this bot. Uh, first off, it's a broadside bot, so that means that the entire purpose of this bot is to tilt turn or tilt sideways just a little bit before firing. And uh, this is usually very easy to accomplish. It's very minor tilt, maybe 5-10 degrees, and uh, you can get some pretty good shots off while still keeping your profile very narrow. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go, going to only hit. Uh, I'm only going to go ahead and take apart uh, a quarter of this bot because it's uh, symmetrical on both the front and the back, and uh, along the side. There are a couple of small differences uh, along the front plate and the back here, and I've also made some changes since my last video. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and remove things for you so you can see the shell in all of its uh, all of its glory. Let's say. So if we're looking here, you'll see I've replaced the hard mount points with uh, TX cubes and also what connects directly to the uh, the cockpit, the pilot seat. Uh, there's there's a couple reasons here. Um, first off, the way that the gunbrella effect works, the way that damage transfers through the uh, gun to the ship when something is hit, um, it causes the block to break before the gun in some situations. So in this case, you pretty much are guaranteeing that the gun gets destroyed before the block does. Um, and so I'm putting TX cubes here, which again should increase rigidity, help the thing stay together. Uh, same along the bottom, and uh, because they actually weigh less, they weigh only 3 kilograms versus the 15 that the T10s weigh, uh, I've got them right here attached to my little escape pod. So before this escape pod had front and back thrusters, I decided to just make them all up. Um, it, it, it doesn't really matter. You don't need a whole lot of control. You just need to get out of there, uh, which is, you know, if you're trying to get RP to survive, or if you just generally want to be a dick and avoid people getting kills on you. Uh, okay, so I guess I can go ahead and start <laughs> taking this apart and showing you how it works. Um, I don't have a whole lot of guide here on how I intend to do this, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you piece by piece and let you guys reconstruct it from what you see. Um, it's not a hard build to get. You just want to take a pause it, take some shots, and try to make sure that you're, you know, putting it together as it shows here. So I'm gonna start in the center and work my way to the front, <clears throat> and then I'll try to also show you this little rudder thing I've got here. It's not super complicated, just it connects on this block, um, and then the front and back halves are the same. So as I mentioned in the last video, I have a little shield here that takes damage, so if, say for instance, someone's from here and there's a little gap in the armor or in the electroplates here, as you can see right here, and I was trying to find a way to deal with that gap. So rather than, um, I, I was orig originally intending to flip the electroplates upside down from where they are now, but I realized it would expose the uh, just underneath the driver's seat, so I decided, no, that's a no-no. What can I fit in here to make this work? And so that's where I came up with this idea. So this should be able to take, unless there's penetration from a rail, it should be able to take at least two sh direct hits on the side before it tears itself apart. So if uh, if it hits here, it'll shoot up to here and then connect into the middle part here. And then uh, I guess I could take that one away. And then we've got the same issue here. So the, uh, the two halves on this side and this side are connected with the prism blocks, as you see here. And then it goes straight up, and then there's another two halves that go straight up. If you see, there's my pilot seat with the thruster going right into his face, because this is Robocraft, and that's how we do things. Um, along the top, it's all solid blocks. Uh, there are no prisms or anything I'm using along the top. Um, down here, though, that is not the case. Uh, I'm using prisms. You can flip these in whatever direction you want. It's not super important. Uh, but I'm using prisms so that way when you get shot here, inevitably, like you will, either from plasma fire just below you or from someone that's really good at aiming, um, it will 
cause it to shoot along the sides, but not and maybe through it, but not down the middle channel. So that should help to uh, minimize how far that damage extends left and right, and should help to keep your ship together overall. Uh, okay, so there's the shield that I just covered. Uh, here is the pilot seat. And just underneath the pilot seat, you have two prisms uh, facing opposite directions. This is a generally a good strategy to have on any ship you build. Um, this will this is again a triforcing principle. Uh, this means that if you get hit in the right spot, it you may lose half your ship uh, unless things are interconnected in other parts. But you're not going to lose the other half of your ship. So it it minimizes what you lose. When you're t doing a mega, I've seen some people use TX blocks and electroplates, and what they're doing is they will just connect like one part of the ship to one part of the megabots megabot seat and there's like six different connection points on that thing so that's six different things that could potentially fall off if they got shot right but it also minimizes how much could get shot off if they were to hit in a uh, in a good spot so it's it's about taking all of your eggs and putting them in different baskets so in this case we're putting our eggs in two baskets and again these are t2 thrusters because that's what will fit um we have a prism so prism 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 and then we have a solid cube here, but because there's a prism underneath it, and I'll show you here in a second. You see the prism right there? So this solid cube doesn't actually connect to the ship. The connection point to the ship happens on this cube, because this is the one where we have an actual cube underneath it. Uh, so that's how that's connected. Um, and then to the rest of the ship, again, you can look at the contouring here. Uh, there's not anything special being done, like you got tetra, prism, prism, solid block, solid block. Uh, you could use the inners here if you want to. I just, aesthetically, I don't like them that much. Um, it would lighten the ship and possibly make it a little bit faster, but it's like putting carbon fiber, like a carbon fiber hood on a car. It's not a, it's not a huge difference, and you are paying a decent premium for it. So, again, a lot of what makes this uh, design work is being able to, you know, you have to take some white cubes and slap them on here, and then you're going to want to fit your way into here. And I'll show you this in a second, but you're going to want to like change your direction and, you know, like hit uh, this side of it so that way you can place the prisms. Otherwise, there's no connection point to put the prisms. Uh, they will connect to the side, but because Robocraft doesn't give you very strong placement controls, you got to get a little creative. Uh, so anyway, enough rambling. So we look at this, and so we guide ourselves up after the connection point to the pilot seat, up to here. And, uh, wait, how do I have this? Yeah, like that. I'm just gonna try to not take apart too much of this thing at a time. Um, if you see, I'm gonna remove these. So I use some contouring here. Uh, right, so you are very limited on what directions you can put this in. Um, again, I really recommend taking advantage of block shapes to try to fit things where you could normally. See how I can't put this here or here, but I can put it here and here. So you can put that there, and then place that there. Eh, actually, I'm just going to take apart more of this and let you guys see it. Who knows, maybe I'll have to figure out how I did it again. Uh, so that one goes up. These ones also flip up and then connect to the top piece. That is a not a solid piece, actually. OK. And again, you're probably just going to want to take this apart slowly and figure out what I did. Uh, so again, these are solid blocks here. And oh, and these are all T10 uh, hovers. So this design uses only two or four T10 hovers and will still stay aloft after all but one have been shot off. So that's, a, that's an advantage to this design. You're not wasting a whole lot on hovers. You are spending a lot of CPU on thrusters. Uh, I wish I could fit larger ones in here so I wouldn't need to use so many. Uh, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, getting this design involved a lot of compromises, and if any really good design, I feel, makes compromises, you have to. You can't be a jack of all trades. You have to have some sort of thing your ship does. So again, that's a tetra and a prism wrapping around the outside specifically. Um, and again, so we go from the pilot seat down to here, and then up to here. And then we've got another one right here. Don't forget which uh, is what allows us to connect ourselves like that. I need to place blocks here so I can fit in. So again, this is all very careful. Like I fit myself in a very specific spots and make this work. So wait until it turns green, then it'll fit. Bam, so now we got that part, <clears throat> just like we had it before. Uh, let's see, yeah. 
Whew. Uh, I believe this one was turned sideways, so I need to... Yeah, I'm trying not to take this apart too much because getting it back together is kind of confusing. <laughs> I spent a very long time getting this ship together. Um, so hopefully you won't have to spend quite as long as I did. So I covered that and that. Uh, let's see. And again, anything that looks like it's a regular block, unless it shows in another part that it's not, just assume it's a regular block. If it doesn't fit, clearly it's not a regular block. Um, let's see. You can see that that's a, another prism there, and then one there. So, here, I'll just show you. So... Again, I didn't come into this with a plan, so it's going to be a little uh, all over the place. Okay. Like so. Okay, and now for the fun part. It's my favorite part. Here, here, here. Uh, this is often easier to do by um, using symmetry mode and hitting across uh, the way. When I was building this, that's how I did it. But I want to make sure to keep the other side for reference, so I don't, you know, mess up this design while I'm showing you guys how it works. So rotate here and here. Again, the whole thing is about creating channels. You want to make sure that everything is connected. Oh, where am I? Here we go. Okay, so again, as I mentioned before, it shoots up here to the left, and then up again, and then up here, and then connects up to here and here, which, uh, okay, so I've covered all that, and then we also have a channel going here and then connecting up to here. Um, let me go ahead and put these back on. Let's see. Wait, is that how I had it? Uh, do I want to remove this to find out? That must be how I had it. Yeah, it is. I guess because it's hidden, you can't see it. I was worried about the artistic stylings of it. Which, again, shouldn't really matter, because this is all about being a functional bot. Oh, yeah, I see this disconnects, so it lets you know that it connects up here. As I mentioned earlier, it acts as a little shield to absorb hits. Tetra, okay. Uh, so let's see, I've covered all of this. I might tear this apart a little bit to show you that it's really just a block. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, the T10 hover. I mean, you're going to find that you can only connect these to so many places. There's not really a place to connect it over here. Uh, so the T10 hover, of course, connects there. And this T10 hover has to connect to here because that's where the, uh, the shield connects to. So the shields connect to this block and this block. And I wasn't able to find a way to turn it around um, because I feel like it'd be more defensive that way. I wouldn't be as liable to lose it, but you know, it didn't really happen that way. Uh, so as I mentioned, there's a turnaround that occurs right here. Okay, and then, oh yeah, so right here I'm using a, uh, I'm using a, uh, prism. <laughs> God, getting a little out of it now. I'm using a prism here um, to force the damage to the sides first. That way you get like a little damage gap here. If this gets shot off or I lose the gun up here, uh, it doesn't really affect the rest of the ship. Um, there's not really any connection point loss because again, it routes down to here. And again, these are just regular... Oh, look, I did actually put a prism up here. I am dumb. I forgot about that. A little bit of triforcing. So that way, <clears throat> this connects only right here. Uh, and also, I guess that's a solid block, so here and here, uh, but doesn't actually extend out to here. I guess that's to prevent, you know, I get this shot or whatever, it doesn't go here and make me lose the uh, T10 hover blade. Okay, so there's blocks. Again, I hope you can see all this alright, and that I'm not missing anything in the description. Again, there's a little gap right here. There's not anything actually in the gap. Uh, these are solid blocks right here, as you can see. Uh, let's see, so I can put that there. 
And then I need some white cubes to act as a construction scaffolding. And then I have to fit my way here. There we go. And again, these uh, this prism connects this prism along the sides, so that's a nice little advantage you can take when you are building these crazy compact designs. When I'm telling people about this, I'm just like, it's like Tetris, man. It's like Tetris. So on this one, I could potentially use a regular block, but I figure it's not really a good point in it. Uh, I'm going to try to minimize the number of connection points. So this is held here on the opposite side, uh, and then down here in the center, and then up the top. So it's got four parts where it connects. I could connect down to here, but I don't know. I'm really trying to prevent it from transferring damage too much. Uh, maybe I'll change it out later. I mean, I could potentially put a solid block right there, I believe. Like if I had a solid block, yeah, that would fit. I don't know. Maybe I'll change it. Again, this ended up being a very long and rambly video, and I hope you guys are alright with that, but if you're not, oh well. Maybe someone else can rebuild it and do a better one. Okay, ah, uh, I'm trapped. Okay, there I found my way out. Let's see here, okay. Uh, I believe that is finished. See, I showed you the way that this connects. Now that's a prism. I showed you that. Uh, I guess I'm going to tear apart part of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just strip out all the regular cubes. Oh, did I use triforcing here? I actually did use some triforcing here. I couldn't remember. Um, so that's a cube. That's a cube. But these aren't cubes. Okay. So you can see these are regular cubes here, so I've got a uh, more of a solid plate in the back. I feel like I could put things here now. Why don't I? I don't know. Uh, that would probably add to the defensive aspect of it, but I think I may have ran, run out of blocks before I finish building this. And I'm out of a CPU now, so I guess I can't do it. Um, but anyway, uh, we've got Triforcing here and Triforcing here which allows us to, so when you, you know, get shot, pew, it doesn't transfer damage sideways, so when you have your Teslas lined up in a row, um, you don't lose all your Teslas by getting hit once. You lose one Tesla at a time. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a nice little advantage there. Let's go ahead and put these back. Uh, then, yeah, I should be out of regular cubes. And then create a facade, make it look like it's flat. It's really not. It's got prisms in it. Uh, so there's the front right there, and again you've got your standard up. Uh, that's a tetra, an inner, inner, inner prism, inner, in, uh, prism, 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 uh, prism. Okay, and the back is a little different, so I'm going to cover some specifics of the back. Um, so uh, with the last few remaining CPU I had, I tried to make sure that all the connections were finished. Uh, I had totally missed it earlier, but I didn't have this connected right. So the damage went to this way and then didn't actually connect here. It just kind of stopped. Uh, but this way, you know, if I lose this part or whatever, I'm still connected up to here in the ship. I don't lose this gun too. Um, now you, each gun can be shot off entirely without it affecting the rest of the ship, whereas before uh, you'd lose a gun, sometimes a lot of the ship would just kind of fall off because of the way that it was all connected. Again, I'm really glad I was able to fit these longer lines in here. That allows you to, uh, to keep the ship tighter together. So the difference here is that I ended up mounting a T4 rudder right here. It fits very snugly. Um, you see it fits into the tire top and bottom of the ship. Uh, I've ended up trying a vertically oriented design rather than this horizontally oriented design and I just did not like it as much. Um, the way that the ship handled and turned, it wasn't as pleasant to use, uh, so I ended up changing it to this way. And again, if that gets shot off, it's no big deal. You don't lose a whole lot of your ship. There's still a lot of places it connects. Uh, like again, you've got this route going up here. 
So the rudder itself is not a big deal. You lose it, the ship will still handle properly because the way that the physics work in the game is that it seems to uh, apply properties to your ship based off of what you have on your ship before you lose the stuff. So again, I lose that rudder, my ship doesn't swing. Um, even though I have these four in a line, there's no real stability in terms uh, to prevent it from swinging, which was a problem with another design I had before, um, which was a size issue. I would have I tried to put them side to side, but I had to use higher tier uh, uh, hovers to you know actually get it working. Otherwise, it wouldn't get up to the next tier. And I was using a tier eight, bumped to tier nine, then to tier ten, and I really destroyed the design doing that. So every time I turn, the ship would swing outwards and since turning was based off the orientation of the ship since the ship was now rotated 90 degrees sideways uh if i would try to turn it it would run my you know one half into the ground and the other half into the sky which wasn't really useful for determining which direction i go um so i ended up realizing rudders are what i needed rudders and thrusters are what i needed to fix that issue and now i've only got four uh four uh, hover blades that's all you really need it's not a heavy ship doesn't require much. Uh, so yeah, I've got you know Tetra, Prism. You can see this. It's pretty much the same design as over there. Uh, this connects out and up. And I believe I covered everything about the design. If you end up having any issues, uh, please ask in the video and I'll try to answer any questions. Uh, see what I can do. But Let's go ahead and put this back together. I believe I covered everything. I hope I didn't miss something obvious or glaring. But again, everything just barely fits together. And someone else mentioned that this is apparently a tank. I've never really considered it a tank. Um, it tends to excel at being a plasma launching base uh, because you know if you're playing the cover game, shields are your best friend. Um, shields are really good for rails too because I mean if you only expose yourself for you know, a few seconds at a time. No one's gonna, <laughs> no one's gonna have enough time to get sustained fire on you to tear things off. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, anything else? Oh right, right. So yeah, you can lose pretty sizable portions of this vehicle. It still will handle just well. I've lost, you know, this entire half, and then like this quarter, and the thing still flies. Uh, I don't have any electroplates. I, I do think in my other video that's what happened to me. I end up showing you how you can move around and control. You can strafe, but you can't turn once you lose half your ship. Uh, but that's enough to get yourself around. Um, you just have to hope that you know your orientation and your guns are pointed in such a way that you can actually hit the enemy when you see them. But I've still taken out enemies, uh, even though most of my ship is missing. I have like you know twenty five percent health left. I'm still a bit of a force to be reckoned with. Actually reminds me of this uh, thruster stick design I saw. I ended up taking apart most of it uh, as a megabot, and what was left of it was like this really tiny little escape pod thing that still had a plasma cannon left on it, and he still had enough control over it. So you could see him flying around and just like firing the single pl plasma shots at you, and you're like, I can't hit that. There's no way I can hit that. Uh, it was absurd, and it's definitely one of the best escape pod designs I've ever seen because escape pods usually don't have a gun attached to them. <laughs> Let's see to make sure that I've got everything as it was before. I'm going to add my plasma watchers to this again. Uh, having these mounting points is really nice. Now I know exactly where they are without having to test and look and all that. Okay, and we are max, yep, max CPU. So yeah, instead of being max CPU at medic, um, I decided to drop a Tesla blade on the medic side of it. Let's see. Yeah, this video is getting a little long. I think I'm going to have to call it quit soon. But you guys wanted to see a little more detail on the ship. Hopefully I'm giving you more of what you want, not just rambling and talking about bullshit that doesn't matter. And if I recall, I could still fit a single. There we go. In case you're reloading. Let you run up and hurt someone. Wait, something's wrong. Oh, wait, right, right, right. This is uh, the medic config. So it's actually two. There we go. I still have eight left in this configuration, which is fine. Um, the SMG and uh, plasma configurations both are max CPU. 
So anyway, here's the little modular design. Hopefully you guys can, you know, tweak it maybe, just do something better. Uh, I would like to have CPU to connect this to here, but this three I just I don't have, and I'd have to take it apart from other parts of the ship that I don't really want to take structural integrity from. So again, this ship is all about compromise. It's all about finding the best compromises you can get, and uh, just for shits and grins, let's. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and load up another one of my bots. I think I've got it on my mega bot right now. Hey, here's my mega bot by the way. It's still a work in progress. Um, I'm not if I'm sure if I'm going to put on another two sets of wheels. Uh, I've actually got six for it. I was testing speed with four to see if going from six to eight is worthwhile. I don't know if it's going to be. I think I might armor it up more. Uh, but here's the basic idea in design. I'm trying to fit 12 on here. This, this is called the Dirty Dozen. And then uh, I'm going to double reinforce this. So like over here. Let me pull this off too. So like this is right here, I'm going to add that to here and then increase it to here and then uh, if I have the CPU, I want to try to make this another line down. Uh, this uses what is called a lattice structure. It's What I found is that um, for the same volume, uh, you use exactly half, or not exactly, you approach half the blocks used for the same amount of volume. And given that uh, T10 requires only one CPU per block versus T3 or T, uh, TX1 which requires three CPU per block. Um, I found that in a 2x2 two two cube of, uh, of TX1 blocks that would end up costing you 24 uh, CPU. But a 3x3 three three cube of T10 blocks using a lot of structure only costs 20 CPU. It has about two and a half times the total armor rating and um, uh, it was like three times the volume or two and a half three times the armor rating, it's it's just way better when the numbers are crunched out to go with armor blocks when you're going for like a tank-like design, going with for the T10 armor blocks. Uh, it's not as fast to repair, but in any one-on-one -on -one mega battle, this thing just wrecks. If there are tons of plasmas around, and eh, you get torn apart a little faster. Um, I'm hoping to mitigate that by adding more armor and connections. I'm going to add a skirt right here around the wheels. Uh, probably switch to three wheels on each side instead of doing eight, and that way I can finish reinforcing everything. Uh, the whole goal is so that you know everything should be reinforced roughly in equal parts. That way, wherever they concentrate their fire, it doesn't matter. You don't want to have a weak point. You want to go ahead and set it all up so that everything's about as strong as everything else. And I think that's what I'm doing here. That's what my goal is, at least. Uh, so again, Dirty Dozen, I've got 12 here. It's not fast, but oh man, any one-on-one, -on -one, when you're playing as a Mega, it comes down to who has more guns left. Uh, if you shoot off all their guns, they are useless. If they're a quick healer and they've got medics, then it becomes a different story. Um, I run into those situations sometimes, and usually when I lose them, it's because my team is not actually following me. Uh, I'll, I'll turn around and I'll see maybe like one medic behind me, and then a couple of stragglers like way off in the distance. Like I was in the cave recently on the Ice World, and I was pretty much up at the entrance at the other side of the cave. I had one medic behind me. I was, you know, doing pretty good damage, but their entire team was just sitting there. And uh, I turned behind me, and there's like two or three guys. Like one of them's doing the the rectify, and there are two guys just sitting there. And I don't even know who the rest of the team is. So I'm just like, well, no wonder we lost. But in one on one, I find that you need more guns to handle in. So that's why I've forgotten electroplates. That's why I decided to go for more of a tank design. Uh, as you see, I still have a lot of CPU left to spend, and I'm going to buy a lot more T10 blocks. It's just, whew, I've got another 7 million, 6, 7 million or so to put into this thing. Uh, it's expensive, maybe even more than that, since I'm not going to be putting on the other uh, other two wheels, probably. But again, it's meant to be a tank. So anyway, let's, uh, right, I'm still recording. I should still <laughs> go back and focus on the video that we're doing. It's okay, who cares if it's a little long. YouTube don't care. You guys don't care. You'll just be like, oh, I've got the bottle ready. Who gives a shit what the rest of this video has to say? So let's see. Uh, uh, cosmetic. I'll put this on. Uh, can I put this here? Yep, I can. Okay. Practice. And uh, if I recall, this thing was getting up to about 190, 200 miles an hour. got pretty good acceleration. It gets to that speed pretty fast. Um, when I'm playing with my friend, usually I can hit top speed before he does. 
Oh damn, am I slower now? Yeah, I'm, I'm hitting about 180, not 190 like I did before. That's what happens when you strap on more T10 cubes. Ooh, mounts my leg makes my <laughs> makes my mouse bumps. Still 180 in the flats, not too bad. And there's your angle right there to get an idea. So, but again, about 10 degrees off. And broadside. But yeah, the whole design of this is like you should be able to travel across the map really fast. Maybe flank. If you're playing a plasma, it's really good for flanking. Um, but that way, it can also stop pretty fast and reverse direction at a relatively decent speed. But as you saw before, the forward thrusters are all primarily. Or the, sorry, the thrusters are all primarily forward. You've really only got like one rear thruster to act more as a brake than anything else. It's generally a lot quicker to just stop, turn around, and then head the other direction. So, like, say you've got like a wall here. The way you're gonna want to handle this is, you come around the wall, you wait until ba, and then maybe turn around and leave. You could also just try to barely expose yourself and fire, and then reverse. I mean, either way, you're gonna be exposed. Another thing you could do, since they're probably not gonna notice you, is do it in reverse, and then pass off. So there's a few ways you can do this. Um, it's also not too... Oh, see I'm doing like 190. Just depends on the situation. Oh, I see. It hits 190 plus when you're turning is what it is. Because you got those side thrusters helping you on your speed. But yeah, it, there's a few hills in this map that you can climb without too much trouble. The Tesla blades get in the way. Uh, oh, by the way, part of the reason that I orient my Tesla blades vertically instead of horizontally is because uh, I find that if they're oriented vertically, you're liable to lose the bottom ones and hit things with them, but that's it. So only like one or two of your Teslas are even worth anything. Uh, but if you orient them vertically, they can all hit at once. As you see a lot of the crazy Tesla vehicles that have tons of Teslas on the front, they orient them vertically and then make like a long row of them. Uh, unfortunately, it does get caught on things, so when you're going up hills, sometimes it's better to reverse. Uh, if you've lost your Teslas, doesn't matter, everything's about the same. But yeah, see, I mean, I'm able to get up here at the top of the map, so when you're playing Plasma, it's not a not a terrible way to be. You can, like, pew, get down there. Unfortunately, you're more liable to shoot only with your bottom ones down so low, because of the, the shape of the vehicle, you can only shoot so far down. Ooh, can I make it through the, across this gap? If I jump off this first, uh, uh, nope. It does have enough thrust to climb. The problem is, is that you get caught. So if you wiggle your way up, you can go pretty vertical. So I'd say it's not a bad design. You can do a lot of things that you need to do. Uh, you're very mobile. There's nothing that is so far away that you can't really get to it. Ah, climbing these crazy vertical ones can be kind of hard, though. Sometimes you gotta back off and wiggle. Then sometimes you gotta give up and just realize that's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there's uh, there's the breakdown of the ship a little bit more detail. I hope that you guys can put together your own. I hope this is enough for you guys to build what's there. I try not to keep anything hidden. Uh, I'm proud of this this design. I'd be really happy to see other people using it. Um, if you want to build one, please let me know. Like, make a video, do a picture, uh, maybe platoon me with uh, platoon with me in battle. Who knows? Uh, anyway, uh, I guess I'm out of things to say. Uh, I've mentioned the vertical Teslas. Uh, a lot of theory and philosophy went into the design of this ship. Uh, nothing in this ship is pointless. Like, there's nothing I've added to this ship that is without having seriously considered adding it. Every block is very much exactly where it needs to be and was not just put arbitrarily. Um, I think that's a good way to design a ship. Whenever you're designing a ship, every block should have a purpose. Every everything it's a good uh, when you're thinking of martial arts is a good. Uh, philosophy, every movement should have a purpose. You shouldn't be moving for no reason. Now, when we first start studying martial arts, that's one of those things that's hard to get over. Like, 
you get kind of locked up, like, what should I do? And then you have, like, some people that just swing rapidly without any real thought to what they're doing. And uh, they're using up a lot of energy, and sometimes it's not going very far. But if you put serious thought into every little thing you do, it will help you out in the long run. I mean, you can only put so much thought into a single idea. And it's generally best to try to fit as much thought into any given idea that you can. Um, again, whether that comes down to a design concept, or fighting, or just doing an activity. Uh, you see, you made it up that slope without too much trouble. Um, but yeah, everything you do should have some sort of purpose, some, some philosophy. You shouldn't just go with some broad idea and then uh, have that be that. You should try to tweak every tiny little thing you can to get as much as you can out of it. Anyway, uh, see, I hit over 350. <laughs> There's, this ship is great. Um, I mean, 350 in a dive, but still. Yeah, this thing was better when it had the three Teslas for, like, sneaking around corners, but it's not so bad. Someone, someone pops up, you can usually get a charge on them if they're not paying too much attention. Arr. Oh, there's that uh, Mega I attacked earlier. Let's make him have a bad day. Oh, oh, turning too fast. That's another nice thing about the drifting is that it uh, turns more from the front. Um, another iteration of this design had a better turning from the front situation, but it was really hard to... God, the guy just keeps running from me. Oh no, too low. I'm not that great at tussling. I'm not that good at this game at all, actually. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so when you're, you know, moving around an enemy, you can keep your front focused at it instead of uh, turning in place and then shooting. You can sort of keep following, keep yourself pointed at the enemy. Which, I don't know, when it comes to tussling, I feel helps uh, a lot. Okay, I got one more blade. I think I might use it on this guy. And sign off. A flag spike there. I wonder if that got caught in the video. Maybe it's just a frame buff for issue. Oh man. Flag spike made me lose him too. Oh hey. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you turn and flip upside down, but you never stay upside down in this design. That's one of the nice advantages of it. Come on, guy. Come on. Ugh, whatever. Screw you. Screw you too. Screw all of you. Except for you YouTubers. Have a good night. <laughs>